So I just want to say that whether you're joining us here in person or online, whether this is your first Sunday joining us or you've been on the South Church journey for a while or anywhere in between, our hope, our prayer, our intention is that this time and this space be exactly what you need. Because I believe that each one of us gathered here across space and time are exactly what this community needs. So with that intention within us, let us take a deep breath and prepare our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our bodies to worship our God. other to worship using the call to worship printed in your bulletin or on your screen. O God of all the prophets, fill us with faith that speaks your word and love that bears all things for your sake until the day when we shall know you fully. Amen. I'd like to invite you into a space of prayer now. Will you pray with me? O God of all the prophets, you knew us and chose us before you formed us in the womb. Fill us with faith that speaks your word, hope that does not disappoint and love that bears all things for your sake until that day when we shall know you fully, even as we are known by you. We pray together now as Jesus first taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
At this time, we are going to be commissioning uh, the South Church transition team, and I'd like to invite the members of the team forward together with our president, Kirk Pulaski, so that uh, we can be commissioned together. Friends, a church family is constantly changing. Babies are born, children grow up, loved ones come to the end of their lives, individuals come and go in our church life. And it is important and right that we recognize these times of passage, of endings, and beginnings. Last summer, we celebrated Reverend Richard Allen's retirement. For 33 years, South Church has been led by Reverend Allen, and Reverend Allen has been himself a symbol of South Church to us and to our community. Today, we pause to mark a change in our life together. Reverend Erica Avina joined us as interim senior minister September 1st, and is working with our church leaders and congregation to support the ministries of our church as we prepare to welcome future pastoral leadership. We seek your playful, prayerful support as we enter into a season of discernment. Reverend Erica is working with our transition team, formed and approved by the church council last September. They will be working to guide the congregation to a state of readiness to move forward under the leadership of a new senior minister. Ultimately, this is not work that can be done by a few people for the whole. Rather, it is work that we need everyone's participation and investment. Today, we ask that you begin with us by supporting us in prayer. We ask the congregation to please respond to the following prayers with, we will. People of South Church, will you pray for the work of the interim minister and the transition team? We will. Will you seek to answer questions honestly? Will you be patient with one another as we move through the process of discernment? Will you include these wonderful people and their work in your personal prayers? Will you support the transition process as we seek to gather the congregation in small groups for reflection and conversation, seeking answers to the big questions of, who are we? Who is God, who is God calling us to be? And who is our neighbor? Now, members of the transition team, Will you seek to listen and support the congregation as we ask open-ended questions about our future ministries? Will you seek God's guidance and encourage this congregation discerning God's call on our community on a new day? Let us join together in prayer. We, we invite, invite God's, God's Spirit, Spirit to work in us so that with resilient joy, we might live in love toward one another and in harmony with God's creation. In God's love, we are made one. We pray for guidance to support and encourage one another in this season of transition. We are confident of God's love in all times of change and in every season of life. Amen. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. 
But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck you up and pull you down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Thank you so much, Paula. Will you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, our comforter and our challenger. Be with us. Open us that we might experience you, that we might experience one another, that we might experience this word in a new way, and be transformed for the transformation of the world. It is in Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Now, the word of God comes to Jeremiah sometime during the reign of King Josiah, one of the last kings before the exile in Babylon. And God says, before you were even you, I knew you and called you. Can you even imagine that God knew each of us before we were even a thing? Now, now I understand this more poetically than literally, but my takeaway here is that each of us, Each one of us is valued and has a purpose and a part in God's project of salvation. And Jeremiah's purpose is to be a prophet from the line of Moses. That's a pretty big deal. The book of Jeremiah is the first book of the latter prophets. It's in your Bible right after the book of Isaiah, a prophet who many of you have already heard of. He was one of the most powerful prophets before, during, and after the exile in Babylon. His words will have such an impact that they will be told and retold, shaped and woven by the generations that follow him forming a beautiful tapestry of challenge and comfort for hundreds and hundreds of years. Some of Jeremiah's words will be harsh. Some will be filled with lament. Some will be so filled with hope that they will build a foundation of resilience for his people that endures even now. And none of this, none of this, will be because of Jeremiah's brilliance or character, though he is no doubt possessed both. No, all of this will come to pass, not because of who Jeremiah is, but because of whose he is, and because of who God is. Jeremiah's response to God's call on his life feels familiar. He says, I don't know how to speak. I'm only a child. When God called Moses hundreds of years before Jeremiah, Moses protested, I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. Please send someone else. Neither one of them felt equipped for what was being asked of them. But again and again, in scripture and in life, God doesn't call the equipped. God equips the called. Now, I know y'all are thoughtful people. And as thoughtful people, you might be thinking, wait just a minute there, Larissa. 
This seems like a pretty slippery slope you are walking on. And you'd be right. Human beings are fallible. And we are brilliant at justification. So it's risky business to claim that God is putting words in your mouth and ideas in your head. I think we've seen that dynamic play out in lots of dysfunctional ways. So I'm not suggesting that putting our trust in God's call on our lives means that every word we say and every idea we have is direct from the Holy Spirit. One must proceed with caution when accepting one's purpose in life and trusting that God will blaze the trail. Caution and humility are helpful tools in the building of the kingdom of God. Freezing in place or running in the opposite direction are less so. Just ask Jonah how well that turns out. So, with that theological disclaimer out of the way, Let's explore what this passage might mean for you and for our church community. How many times have you felt pulled to do something magnificently ambitious only to be shut down by that little naysayer in your mind saying, what if I can't? What if I fail? What if I look stupid? In other words, I don't know how. I'm only a child. I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. Or, in Peter's words, Peter, the guy who would become the rock the church was built on, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Where does that voice come from? I'd like to believe that it's at least in part humility. But there is also a strange kind of arrogance in our insistence that we are not suited for the role that God is calling us to. I mean, if we go back to the very beginning of this text, if God knew us before we even existed, if it's true that each one of us is needed in the building of the kingdom of God, who are we to say we can't. And what is it in us or in the world that resists stepping into our part in God's great project? I love this quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant or gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. Playing small does not serve God. In fact, Playing small might mean that an important part of the work of God's kingdom is left undone. You don't have to do all the things. You are only called to do your thing. So what's your thing? Where does your brilliance lie? Frederick Buchner says, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. The faithful life isn't just about finding your gift, your passion, your best life, but about merging those things with the need of the world the piece of kingdom work that you are particularly suited for. In my own life, I found that place to be pretty daunting. Not necessarily heroic, okay? We're not all called to be Jeremiah's or Peter's or Moses, but always just just out of my grasp. It's it's a place that makes me want to say, I don't know how to do that. Can't you find someone else? 
I have also found that God's best work in me happens when I feel like I'm over my head. Maybe that's because when I feel like what I've been asked to do is beyond my capabilities, I have to trust God more. I have to get out of my own way and God's way and let the Spirit flow. So what's that sweet and scary spot for you? Where does your deep gladness intersect with the world's deep need? At today's annual meeting, we'll celebrate all the ways that folks in our community have shown up and done the hard thing with God's help. We'll vote in and commission a new set of lay leaders and step into 2022 with fresh eyes and perspectives, looking for the places God is calling us to. There will be so many opportunities for each one of us to serve, to trust God, and to say a big yes to the work before us. If we are being faithful, there will likely be times when that little naysayer in our head, that that little voice that wants to play it safe will protest, I can't possibly do that. But what if you can? What if we can? What if it's not so much about who we are than it is about whose we are? We belong to God. Always have. Always will. To Moses, to Jeremiah, to Peter, and to every other person God has called who says, I can't, I don't know how, send someone else, God responds, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I've got you. I'm with you. Together, we've got this. Who are we to say we can't? Who are we to play it small? God isn't asking us to do it all, just to do our part faithfully and well and with our whole hearts. And God wants to be with us empowering us, equipping us as we do it. Just as a God was with Moses and Jeremiah and Peter and all the saints who've done the hard thing and worked on their little pieces of the kingdom, whatever 2022 brings, whatever hard and brilliant and wonderful things we are called to, God's got us. We've got each other, together with God. We've got this. Amen. I'd like to invite our deacon, Roman Green, forward to share the book of uh, Joys and Concerns with the congregation. These are the joys and concerns for today. January 30th, 2022. Prayers for Jack, dealing with mental health issues. Prayers for my friend Joy, with a cancer diagnosis. Prayers treatments will be successful. Prayers for Tracy B, who passed away this past week. May God hold her and her family close during this time of transition and grieving. Prayers for my mom, who is battling cancer. And prayers of joy for the beautiful snow. Are there any other joys or concerns to share this morning? You got one? We got them all. We're good. Okay. We're just checking Facebook to make sure we got mm-hmm. them all. Will you join me with me in prayer? Holy God, you knew us before 
we knew ourselves. You consecrate us by your own spirit, even now to be your servants. Create in us today hearts worthy to be your prophets, that we might go where you send us and speak the word that you give to us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Place a word upon our lips and your grace upon our hearts so that we might pluck up and pull down destroy and overthrow, build and plant as you alone command. This morning, we give thanks for your spirit, for the night's rest which has gone before, for the sunlight on snow this morning, we lift those in our midst who are injured and in need of healing. We pray for Jack, for Joy. We lift up Ollie and Joanne in the hospital with COVID. We pray for a mother with a new cancer diagnosis. And gracious God, Bless those who are grieving today, the family and friends of Tracy B, Kim H, Nils C. And now in this silence, God, we lift up the anxieties that we carry, the burdens unresolved in the silence now. As the bell marks time for us, we give thanks for the time of our lives, the gift of being together, although socially distant, the gift of a new day and a new calling. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord, Amen. We come to a time of offering this morning. We give these gifts freely. We receive these gifts gratefully. We dedicate these gifts to the work of our congregation, serving human wholeness, caring for our planet, upholding religious freedom, welcoming the stranger, loving one another in a new day. Will our usher come forward?
dedicate these gifts to the work of this congregation, and we affirm your call upon our lives, even now. Amen. to your day, your week, your life, as you go to the annual meeting at noon on Zoom, may you find that place where your deep passion and the world's deep need intersect. May you say a big yes to that daunting path before you, knowing that God goes with you and any time that voice in your head says, what if I can't? May the stronger voice of the Holy One say, what if I can? Go forth to do the work you have been called to do, empowered by the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. <laughs>